three o'clock and I am done for the day. I worked out yesterday that I pushed myself for a couple of hours longer than I should have and felt rotten last night. So I'm going to take my own advice today and finish up and make sure that I finish up before I'm exhausted. Key energy management technique there, you don't wait until you're exhausted to rest. You've got to find that point before exhaustion kicks in and give yourself permission to rest because it's very, very difficult to rest from such a complete place of exhaustion. Um, today's been a real challenge for me emotionally, uh, hence why I've got <laughs> a warning just now on strong emotions may be present. Um, as, as many of you know, I am uh, currently navigating a, a, health, a, a health challenge um, and it hasn't finished and I get little bits of information. And I guess what I want to talk in today is why it is so difficult for people to trust us as health professionals because my trust in a number of health professionals and in our health system today is at an all-time low. Now, I get to live in Australia and we have a universal healthcare system, which means if you get sick here, you're going to get looked after. It doesn't mean you get the choice of care. It means you put up with whatever's available when it's available. We don't have unlimited funds for unlimited people, but it does mean that everybody is going to get looked after. Um, and I've got politics around that and issues around that, but this is not the entire point. So I, I have a, a medical team. I, have, I don't even know who's in the team yet because this medical team are talking about me but not including me in the discussion. First thing, piss a patient off really quickly, have conversations about them with other people without them knowing that that's going on. So um, I have a surgeon. She's done some surgery. She made some recommendations. Uh, I now need to see an oncologist. So there you go. I've, I've, I'm living with cancer at the moment. I So here in Australia or in the part of Australia where I live, I can't actually find a oncologist who specializes in breast cancer who will see me as a fee-for-service patient. I have to wait in the queue. So I'm no longer an at, I'm no longer life-threatening. So I have to wait in the queue for my name to come up and then I get to go and see a registrar, have an appointment, which I know is going to say, could we please refer you for this test that you will have to pay four and a half thousand dollars out of pocket for? Not a problem. More than happy to have this test if it means I don't have to have chemotherapy. Just putting it out there. What the problem is I have is that there has been this multidisciplinary team meeting where this person heard this person, but they heard a different story. So if I hadn't have pushed today to try and find an oncologist who would see me, fee for service, didn't even have to agree to be my treating oncologist, but purely would make this referral for this specialized test to occur, that's all I was looking for because that's going to take three weeks to happen, right? All I wanted was somebody to say, I will make that referral for you. Not a problem. Yes, you need to have that test. There's no reason why that test can't be done. Not a problem. I can't find anybody to do that. I could not find anybody to do that. Now, I'm a health professional. I am used to being able to go, not a problem. I don't need to be a burden on the public health system. I am happy to pay cash for that. And I'll get my small reimbursement or my what I'm entitled to reimbursement from Medicare. That's all okay. I was more than happy to make those decisions. But what has really broken down today is that this team that is supposed to have my best interests at heart, who are communicating about me and without me, can't agree on what it was that they said they were going to do. So I end up having a, a conversation with a breast care nurse because I am fortunate enough to have one here in Australia and have said, I am so confused. At the end of my conversation, she was so confused. She was so confused. I was so confused. She said, I need to sort this out. I was actually at that meeting and now I'm really confused with what you're being told. So what I've discovered today is that this poor communication, even when it's in a multidisciplinary team environment, patients, clients expect, if they have given you permission to talk to other people in their world about their treatment, they're expecting you to do it. 
And one of the biggest ways and best ways that we can be breaking communication, breaking trust is to poorly communicate about what's going on and to, to allow a person to feel so disabled or so disempowered by a system. And I'm living that today and I'm livid because it's unnecessary. And as health professionals, we, should not, we get sucked in to this huge vortex the industry of health and people get forgotten about and I'm really really I guess grateful that I've had this opportunity today because I never ever ever want any of my clients or any client of Purple Code to ever feel like I feel right now so yeah I've been able to move things forward but at what cost so my stress levels are through the roof I can already feel a flare up happening because I haven't been able to protect myself from this stress today. I am as frustrated as all heck. And you know what? This is just unnecessary. So if you offer to communicate to a client's treating health professional, for God's sake, do it or communicate with your client why you're not going to. If you are a part of a multidisciplinary team, could you please make sure that the client is actually involved in the decision making about the client's care to the best of their ability? It's not that we expect all of our clients to be empowered and go and take control of their life and implement treatment recommendations. But geez, if we can't even get this simple stuff right, how on earth are they going to trust us with treatment recommendations? So right now, I, I don't know how to trust the people who are giving me advice about this. And this, I, I, I'm like, if I go forward with some of this treatment, I can't go back. And I've already been in a situation, oh, okay, unhelpful, very raw, very real. I have a meme that keeps coming up in my social media that says the true currency of a health professional health is trust, it's not money. And I am living that today because this lack of trust has really made it difficult for me to know how to navigate this, which means what I'm going to do is want extra reassurance, which means that all the health professionals are going, why are you questioning my opinion? So everybody's going to get icky and arced up. I'm going to have to do all this relationship therapy to help people understand the context and the systems that are involved. And you know what? I'm tired and I'm still sore. And I had to take drugs that make me feel yuck right now because we don't have any other treatment um, pro protocol in place. So I don't need, I'm sorry, Joe. I don't need, I wish you weren't going through this, Joe. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for all of you who care. What I want to happen as a result of this video going live is for people to take notice of how we treat our clients because we're all awesome at it in the room. But you know what? It's what happens outside of the room that makes a really, really big difference. So I'm going to go and rest and get off social media and ask my husband to answer my phone now because I need chocolate. Please, please, please take notice of this today and don't let this be one of your clients.